Hello and welcome to Rows of Dependent Dropdowns. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I recently received the following question. How do I make dependent dropdowns work for multiple rows? And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Exercise one. All right, we're gonna store our choices in a table. And basically, if the primary dropdown choice is A, these are the results that should go into the secondary dropdown or the dependent dropdown. If they're a B, these go into the secondary dropdown. If the primary is a C, these go into the secondary dropdown and you get the idea. Now the main assumption for this to work is that this table needs to be sorted by the primary column. In other words, all the primary choices need to be grouped together. If I were to put another A choice down here, this approach is not gonna work. So after adding all the choices, we just simply sort by the primary and then we're good to go. So the first thing we need to do is talk about the XLOOKUP function. Equals XLOOKUP. I want to go find this comma in here comma and I want to return this value close function and enter now this returns red and it's actually returning a reference which we're going to leverage in a second but the point is it returns the first matching row what's really cool about the xlookup function is there's a search mode argument and we can make it search last to first and hit enter now it returns green so as you can see, it's the last matching row. It's also a reference. And this means what we can do is we can use a range operator in between two X lookups. Check it out. X lookup. I want to go find this comma in here comma. I want to return this close function range reference operator. So that's the first cell in the range we want to return. Then we'll use another X lookup. We want to go find the value in C5 in this list, comma, return this. And then we're going to go to the search mode argument and say last to first. Close function and enter. And now what we can see is when we have A, it's returning the values from the first through the last A. If this goes to B, we're getting the B choices. And if this goes to C, we're getting the C choices. Okay, and so using XLOOKUP like this is gonna be the key to our dropdowns. And now with this warm up complete, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. So let's start by creating our primary dropdown. If I go back to our choices table, I basically want A, B, and C. But we wanna create a dynamic solution so that if we add new choices, they're automatically gonna flow into our dropdown. So what we're gonna do is equals unique of this primary column close function and enter. And now what we get is a unique list of the primary choices and it's dynamic. So if we come back over here and I add another choice like D and I cruise back over here, that's gonna appear. Let me just delete that. Okay, now in order to use this in a dropdown, what we wanna do is create a named range. So what we're gonna do is formulas, name manager, new. And we're going to name this DD underscore primary for the primary dropdown. And it's going to refer to B8, but we want it to include all the cells in that spill range. So we'll use the spill operator. And then we click OK. And then we close. Now, if we want to set up a dropdown, we go to data, data validation. And we allow a list and it's going to be equal to DD primary and we click OK. Now those are the choices in our dropdown A, B and C. And let's just test it out. If we were to add another primary choice, yes, that automatically appears in the dropdown. Now with that step complete, let's go to the next exercise. Exercise three. First, let's set up the primary dropdown. I select the range data validation allow a list. The list is equal to drop down or DD primary. Click OK. Now let's just confirm it works and everything looks good. Now let's create our XLOOKUP function that returns the range of the correct secondary choices equals XLOOKUP. We want to go find this comma in here comma and we want to return this close the function then we have a range reference operator. Then we have another X lookup where we want to find C7 
comma, in here, comma, return this, and then we use search last to first for the search mode argument. Close function and enter. So if the primary is an A, these look like the correct secondary choices. If this is a B, those look correct. And if this is a C, those look correct. So we just need to get this into a dropdown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy my XLOOKUP formula, and then I'm gonna delete that, and then I'm gonna create a new name. Formulas, name manager, new, DD secondary. And the formula is, and I just paste it, and then I click OK, and then close. And now I select this range, and I go to data, validation, I'm gonna allow a list, and this list is equal to DD secondary. And I click OK. Now, if the primary is A, then the secondary is these choices. That looks good. Here, if it's a B, these choices also look good. And if this is a C, these choices look good. So that's how we can set up dependent dropdowns that span through many rows. But there's something important to realize here. This stored value is red. And if I change the primary choice, nothing changes this stored value of red. It's an invalid choice, but Excel doesn't somehow go rewrite like a stored value. It just leaves it the way that it is. So we could get crazy with VBA, but if we wanted a simple solution, we could at least notify the user that this choice is now no longer valid. If we wanted to do that, what we can do is select these cells and apply conditional formatting. Home conditional formatting, new rule. We're gonna use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're gonna say count ifs. So we wanna count the number of rows where this primary value is equal to this. We're gonna use a relative reference for that, comma, and where the secondary value, comma, is equal to this. And once again, we're going to use a relative cell reference. And if the total number of rows is equal to zero, we want to alert the user. So we're going to go to format. And you can format it however you'd like. In this case, I'm going to go with this and a font color of this. Click OK and OK. Now I've got some formatting for the empty cells, so if I wanted to not format it when the cells are empty, I could add another rule. Conditional formatting, new rule. For blanks, let's do no format, click OK. And we just need to check one checkbox, so I go back to manage rules, and I say stop if true, so that if it's actually blank, it's not gonna evaluate any additional rules. Click OK. All right, so now let's test this out. If this is A and I pick a valid A choice, I'm good. If I later change this to B and there's not a valid choice, at least I'm notified, and then I can go pick the correct value. If this is C, this looks good, and if I change this to B, this is not a valid B choice, so I get notified. That's how we can set up dependent dropdowns in rows and notify the user if there's an invalid secondary choice. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 